after a whole year of not working on Super Pecto and Obama, I finally got my first boss to work. Oh, it works! Ah, I'm so smart! As you can tell, I was pretty freaking excited about it. I have to say this is all thanks to the article that GD Quest wrote, so go check it out if you want to use a state machine. But it made my life so much easier. So starting out, I had a rough idea of what I wanted Big Bad Guy to do. First, I wanted him to walk back and forth. Then I wanted him to jump at the player. Then I also wanted him to, like, go into his trash can and roll at the player. And possibly have a rock stomp attack when he's at, like, half health. And then he'll get mad and go bonk, bonk, bonk. And then rocks will fall, like I also mentioned in the last video. The problem was checking for all of the conditions for each of the different attacks was, like, way too complicated for me. And I ended up giving up, like, a year ago. And I knew what a state machine was before, but I just, like, couldn't get it into my monkey brain to make it work. I don't know why. Well, I do know why, but I'll get into that in the video. Anyhow, this is how I started working on the state machine. Okay, let's see what we're working with here. All right. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, I don't get it. I quickly enough figured out that just reading the article over and over wasn't really going to help me, so... I started by making a new project. And inside that project, I put in the typical player character that's just like a kinematic body and all the other goods and services that go inside of it. And then I immediately hopped into making the state machine and the base state class. I'm going to go over each part of it, but I'll try to keep it brief so it's not too boring. So starting at the base state machine class, we've got the state machine variable, which all it does is hold a reference to the state machine. And next, we have handle input, which its code is just run in unhandled input. But I don't know what unhandled input is actually useful for, because I've never used it. And after that are two things I have used before, is update and physics update. Update is ran in the process function, and physics update is run in the physics process function, which you use to like move characters and stuff. And next we have the enter and exit functions. They do exactly what they say. Enter is just before the state enters and exit is just after it leaves. And that's it for the base state class. Each state that inherits from it will use some combination of these functions, but not necessarily all of them. And now we've got the juicy state machine, which is what handles the interactions between all the states. So first of all here, we have a custom signal for when it transition states. I haven't personally used it yet, but I'm sure it's useful for some things. Next, we've got the initial state variable, which you can set to the initial state. Then we've got the current state variable, which holds the currently active state. Go figure. In here in the ready function, it takes all of the states that are children of it, and it assigns itself as their state machine variable, the thing I mentioned earlier. These next three functions are all built-in Godot functions. Unhandled input, process, and physics process. The only thing they do here is they call the functions of the current state, so it would be handle input, update, and physics update, respectively. And last but not least, we've got the transition to function. It does exactly what it says. It transitions from one state to another. First, it runs the exit function of the current state. Then it assigns the new state to the current state and runs the enter function of it. Also, the reason I gave up like a year ago is because apparently I'm super monkey brain and I didn't understand that these scripts were supposed to be attached to nodes that were attached to the thing you wanted to run the code on. Because, again, I am a monkey, I guess. Like you can see here in Stateman, I have Stateman and then a child of Stateman is the state machine and the child of the state machine is all of the states. And that's how it's supposed to be set up with the scripts on each state. As you can see here, state man has three different states, idle, walk, and jump. And jump doesn't do anything because I didn't want to waste my time on it. So when state man enters the idle state, its velocity is set to zero. And then when you press any of the forward direction keys, it'll go to the movement state. So obviously just having the idle and the walk state is way too simple for a state machine. But it did get me started on implementing it on big bad guy. And here is Big Bad Guy's intended flowchart for his states. So first of all, we have the idle state here, which is just Big Bad Guy not moving, and that's it. Currently, Big Bad Guy will enter the walk state when Obama gets close enough. And then while in the walk state, Big Bad Guy will just patrol between two points until Obama either gets close enough or far away enough. So when Obama gets too close, 
big bad guy will attempt to jump above him. Then one of two things could happen. If Obama is never under big bad guy and he lands on the ground, he'll just go straight back to the walk state. But if he gets above Obama, he'll enter the fall state and fall at a rapid pace right into Obama. And after big bad guy makes contact with Obama in the fall state, he would jump back to one of the two patrol points I mentioned earlier. I was originally going to have it, even if he missed in the fall state, he would still do the jump back. But as I was writing the script for this, I would, thought it was a good idea if he missed to go into this rock fall state that I haven't yet implemented. And then after that, go into the jump back state. So the jump back state was god awful to work with for some reason, because I originally had it named return jump. And for some reason, it would just not work. Like, look here. Every time I had it called return jump, when big bad guy was on screen, he would immediately go to return jump and it would not work. It would just stop doing anything. And then I renamed it to jump back and it started working again. And I do not know what caused it, but it works now. And that's what matters. But anyway, so from the jump back state, it'll just jump to one of the two points, whichever is furthest from Obama, and then immediately go back to the walk state. And that's it. And the other option for the walk state, if Obama gets too far, is the rollout state, where he'll go into his trash can and then roll out Obama. And this one's also not implemented, but if he, I guess if he hits, he'll just go back to walk. And there's a small chance from the rollout state that Bay Bad Guy will go into, wait a minute, that's not a state. Let me just get rid of that real quick. Uh, sorry about that. And here's a quick demo of how Big Bad Guy currently works. So right now, while he's off screen, he's in the idle state. But when he comes on the screen, he goes right into his walk state. And he'll patrol these two points. Why did he stop? He entered rollout. Oh, because I moved too far and rollout doesn't work. All right, that's easy enough to fix real quick. Control K. All right, done. All right, back to demonstrating the walk state. As you can see, he'll end up turning around this point here. And then he'll go back and he'll turn at the other point, but that doesn't matter. You'll see the jump state. For some reason, he doesn't jump at Obama when he's moving away, but when he's moving towards, it works fine. And then he falls down at Obama. For some reason, he did it twice. And then he jumped over here. And he's still broken because, oh, I didn't code a way to transition out of the jump back state. But that's fine. And yeah, that's basically what Big Bad Guy can do now. Um, Bye-bye.